Today I will show you how you can really easily create those cool 3D images for your Facebook posts. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode. Facebook recently announced that from now on we can upload those really cool 3D photos from our personal computers, which is really good because we don't need to use just our phones anymore to take a photo with a portrait option to generate a depth map inside a phone and then upload it to Facebook to have that really cool 3D effect. From now on, we can do that with any photo that we want with a little bit help of Photoshop, which I will show you in a couple of moments. But before that, let me tell you that this episode is sponsored by Skillshare. For you guys who don't know, Skillshare is really big online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in Photoshop, Illustrator, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Design in general, I don't know, photography, videography, business marketing, just name it, they have it. They're a really cool place to go to fuel your creativity, to improve your skills, to learn some new skills, etc. I personally love to gain new skills and to improve my current skills, so I use Skillshare. Currently, I'm watching there some lessons in marketing and business and they're really, really good. Also, guys, let me just show you really quickly. You can go to Skillshare and just type Instagram, for example, and you have Instagram stories, hacks for success, branding your Instagram, how to collaborate with Instagram influencers, etc., etc. A lot of topics for Instagram. Or if you want to type Facebook, you have a lot of topics from Facebook, how to gain success of Facebook, Facebook groups, Facebook's marketing, etc., etc. Maybe you're in the photography or low light photography or whatever. You have ton of classes there in photography, food photography, product photography, portrait photography, whatever you want, they have it. So the, they're really affordable too. An annual plan is less than $10 per month. So that's really cool. But for first 500 of you guys of my subscribers who use the link down there in the description, you will get two months completely free trial of premium, premium account on Skillshare. So that means that you will get unlimited access to all the classes there two months completely free. After that, you can choose if you want to continue with the subscription or not. That's completely up to you, but be fast. Use the link down there in the description and take advantage of this two months completely free. All right, guys, now let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. This is a photo that I did just for fun a long time ago. And actually I did similar tutorial with the Darth Vader instead of my friend right here who is acting as Darth Dracius. So if you want to check out how to create this kind of photo manipulation, you can watch it on the link right here. And also we will use this photo to create this really cool 3D effect. Actually, guys, if you're following me on my Facebook page, you already know that a few days ago on Friday, actually, I published this same photo as a 3D photo where I was asking you guys if you would love to see uh, how to create this kind of effect. And a lot of you guys said that you would love to see a tutorial on that topic. So here is the tutorial. So before we continue creating a 3D effect out of this photo, let me tell you something about the theory. Nobody likes theory, but this, this is really short. For having a 3D photo on Facebook, you need basically two files. One is photo itself and another is depth map. What is the depth map? It's nothing scary. It's really actually a simple thing. It's grayscale representation of the same photo that contains information about the distance between the object in that photo. Uh, view from a certain viewpoint. So it's really easy. So that map will tell you how uh, further away or closer to the viewer's eyes are the object on that photo. And it's really easy to create that map in Photoshop. Sometimes can be just a little bit more time consuming, but it's not hard at all. And it's much easier if you have your PSD file, your photo manipulation with PSD file already because you have everything extracted our hero, in this case, a TIE Fighters, pile of garbage, etc. You have everything extracted and ready to create a depth map out of it. If not, if you want to use any other photo that you, you didn't use for your composite or whatever, you can do that too. You just need to make selection of certain objects that you want to move in that 3D effect. It's really simple and easy. So now we will create that uh, 3D effect out of this. We will create actually depth map. And uh, for this effect to be even better, you need to have at least three layers of depth. So basically three plans of depth. So in this photo, we basically have three plans. The furthest plan is the sky. Then the middle plan is the type are the type fighters right there. And the first plan closest to the camera is Darkrakis with a pile of garbage, this robot, lightsaber, etc. So 
Now we need to create grayscale version of these three layers of depth. And in case this is a photo without layers, what you need to do is to use some kind of selection tool in case you don't know how to select basically anything in Photoshop and later extract it or do whatever with that but that you want. You can watch my tutorial on that on the link right there. So for example, we want to make uh, the selection of this TIE Fighter. I will use quick selection tool and just quickly select it like this. And then I will create new layer and choose a gray color. So maybe this kind of gray doesn't matter for a start and just fill it with a gray. So I have this as one gray silhouette we need to make all of this as a gray silhouette so i will now delete this because luckily for me i have this as save as psd files with all the layers so i will make the selection i have already extracted the elements so i will make the selection really really quickly so first thing that i like to do is to save the image itself as jpeg or as png file and to be ready for uploading for uh, to facebook this is a little bit lower res version than original photo i i uh, lowered the, the resolution to uh, 2048 on the longest side so i don't want to have a huge photo on facebook i just make it smaller and now what i want to do i want to save it for web in this case i will press the keyboard shortcut shift control alt s or shift command option s on a keyboard and then you will have this safer web dialog box and just choose png24 and uh, here png24 or if you want jpeg just go with the jpeg high but i want png files for this kind of example i will press save and i will name this star wars okay and just remember the name because you will need to use exactly the same name for that map with underscore that so you will see later that's it this is ready for publishing now i will hide this this is already color corrected layer etc so now i will go to other layers and first what i like to do is to make silhouette grayscale silhouette of first layer depth the closest to the camera so this is dark Dracus robot and a bunch of pile trash pile down there so for that i need to select krakius press ctrl or command on the mac click on the layer to make selection now i will press and hold ctrl and shift to add a selection of a lightsaber robots had this robot sparkles and the garbage pile so let's go to the garbage shift ctrl click then try robot lightsaber shift ctrl click robot had and robot itself and also sparkles and that's it this is our first plan so i will create a new layer right there and choose any gray color it doesn't matter we can change it later and we will change it later and i will show you and explain you the difference between uh, contrast in those plans how it will affect the 3d effect at the end so i will create new layer choose a gray color and now if my gray color is a foreground color i will press alt on a PC option on a Mac and backspace to fill it with I will fill it several times to fill it with um, gray okay and now I can just go and choose maybe debris right there as one plan which is really cool so let me see where it is where it is I can now hide this and I'm not sure about it's here okay and now I will create another layer. I will fill with exactly the same color because I just want to speed up this. And later we will change the brightness of gray. So I don't need to worry about that. So just fill it again with a gray color. Okay, new layer. That's it. This is the green. This is Krakus. Okay. Then what I like to do, I like to go to TIE Fighters. So TIE Fighters, this is first one and create a new layer and name it t1 and fill it with that and now i will fast forward i'll do for those three and the sky same okay and now we left only with the background so i will put the background just here below the krakus layer and just fill it with uh, gray and now we have everything gray because everything is same tonality now what i like to do we can use 
curves adjustment layer, levels adjustment layer, we can use just the destructive method with control M or command M and just make everything darker or brighter. It doesn't matter because this is just the color. We can always make it darker or brighter. Right guys, so one more time, avoid complete white or complete dark, like complete black colors because that will create some artifacts in 3D effect. Just stick with variation of gray. And uh, now, for example, if I want my background to be really dark like this, it's not completely black, it's really dark. And I press OK and then go to Krakis, the first plan, and I want him to be really bright. That means that between those two layers is really big contrast. In a matter of depth, that means that it's really big distance between the last plan, the sky, and the first plan, the Krakius with garbage, etc. So it's really big distance and the parallax will be different, it will be bigger. If the contrast is lower, their closer variation of gray, that means that they will be like closer each uh, together and then the movement will be a little bit more subtle. And for Facebook, because that's how 3D photos are uh, working on Facebook, when you move one subject, for example, uh, Krakius right here, you will see some blur around the crackers because Facebook will generate uh, some, it will actually fill those empty spots when you're moving the subject. And that's why you don't want to move too much elements in the photo because that blur effect around the subject, you will see that later. So my advice for you is don't go with the too high contrast with uh, between the object experiment see what works best for what photo different photo needs a different uh, variation of those gray colors but try experiment and that's a key to have really good really good looking 3d photo also there is another trick that you you will see later you need to blur maybe some silhouettes or to add some uh, outer glow to have even more subtle effect and better effect overall you will see that later so right here as you can see i have some artifacts right there because my selection is not perfect and right here i have some artifacts and there and i will leave that for now just for you to see what that will cause the 3d effect and uh, what i want to do i want to do undo a few times so i want my background to be a little bit brighter not so dark probably something like that then those maybe a little bit brighter even like that then those fighters i'm now pressing control or command m just to quickly uh, enter the curves dialog box and to change the brightness so this one will be like it's further away furthest away of those four fighters so something like this right almost just a little bit brighter than the background than this one will be again dark, maybe like that, a little bit brighter than this one. So then these two guys, those are more near the camera, so they will be brighter. But now you need to balance it. You need to see what will work the best for your photo. So for example, this one, this one it's uh, uh, closest to the camera and it needs to be the brightest of all those four um, TIE Fighters, but that means that this one, this one will move most and you don't want this one to be so movable because it will not be so good effect. You will see that in your own photos, just try experiment and because of that I will not make this one so bright. Actually I will leave it like this for ex example, you will see later why and then I will change. Okay, the, the our hero can be in the same focal plane as, as uh, this TIE Fighter and probably the debris right there, we can make them a little bit, just a touch brighter like this. And that's it. We have our depth map ready to go. That's it. We are finished with the depth map. That's a grayscale representation of original photo. And as you already saw, the difference between the luminosity of that gray color is actually the dis distance between it's representing the distance between the object. Now what you need to do is just to save this for web exactly the same like we did with the original photo. So shift control alt s or shift command option s on a Mac and just save it. But this time name it exactly like you did with this Star Wars underscore depth. 
Okay, this is how you, well, it's E, not A. All right, this is how you need to name it in order to be able to have that 3D effect on Facebook. And that's it, just press save. And now you need to go to Facebook and just go to your post and drag, select both of those files, drag it right there and drop it and just wait for a few moments to those files to upload and then to Facebook to generate a 3D file out of it. Okay, creating a 3D photo and you will see just in a couple of moments the result with some artifacts because we didn't fix some things but I just want to show you that because you will for sure get with some photos in similar situations. So this is a photo and if I move this everything looks cool except see uh, some white border here that I don't like some white around there down below a lot of crazy stuff are going see the wing of this guy right here oh, it's not so good so we need to fix that and only fix is to change the variation of gray color and to add some kind of blur or outer glow so let me show you that I will cancel this okay and let's go back to Photoshop and now let's play with first with this I just want to fix this silhouette I don't want this to be visible this is my mistake in selection I left it purposely just for you to see which kind of problem you can encounter so just fix this really quickly I will just fast forward this and guys here on the sword on lightsaber I just want to sample this same gray color and just with really soft brush just add it right there have a better transition between the sword and uh, cape right here and that's probably that's probably it you can see those small artifacts right there so that means that this is affecting this is affecting our effect overall but we can we can fix this with uh, some kind of let's let's undo this a few times we can fix it with some kind of outer glow effect you will see in a second so what can we do right there we can double click on this guy on this layer and go to outer glow okay and then choose the color choose this color right there say okay and just spread this glow a little bit but just a little bit maybe three four uh, maybe a little bit more 10 pixels a little bit just to have that glow maybe around 10 pixels it depends on the image size so need to experiment with that press ok and also I will do that with this small guy so if I go right there double click and uh, say outer glow this is too much and of course I need to match the color press ok maybe I want just one or so pixel two pixels all right that's cool and also with this guy right there because it's close to me outer glow choose a proper color and just just do something like maybe 10 again or no 10 it's okay and I will leave others intact to see what kind of effect will be also I will lower the contrast between the subject on the photo so I will make this guy less bright darker probably something like this and now because I made him darker I need to go to outer glow and just again choose the right color that's okay and also I will make our hero darker so a little bit something like this and again go to outer glow fix the color okay and probably this one needs to be darker something like that and background needs to be touch brighter so probably something like this just to have a subtle variation between those colors and also guys you can see the debris right there we can play with it maybe they're too bright now and maybe I don't want them to overlap that's something that you need to decide but for now I will leave it like that maybe I will make it just a touch darker and uh, that's it okay now let's save this for web just save it say replace and upload it to Facebook 
And here it is guys, as you can see now everything looks much much smoother and better, even this TIE Fighter is now complete, it doesn't have problem with the wings like it has previously, so basically everything is in a tweaking, uh, the contrast between those uh, grey colors in the depth map, so depth map is the key of a good 3D image, and as you can see here if you pay closer attention to the edges here, if I move the mouse you will see that blur around the models, around the TIE Fighters, around the robot, etc. That's normal, that's how the 3D images on Facebook works. You cannot avoid that, unfortunately. But this is this is really, really cool effect. We can even make it better if we spend a little bit more time tweaking some small details. And uh, just remember, one more time, you need to create good depth map. You need to name the depth map exactly the same like you named the original image with underscore depth otherwise it won't work. It doesn't matter if it's PNG or JPEG, both works. You can even combine maybe PNG, the main image, and JPEG, the depth map. It doesn't matter, so just as the names are good. And also, guys, you can experiment with gradients to create that uh, gradient depth. Just try experiment with that and you will see what kind of effect you will achieve with the gradients. It's really cool. And remember that uh, adding a little bit of uh, outer glow with the same color that is a silhouette of an object, it can help sometimes or sometimes can even help if you merge all the layers into one, I mean a depth map, and just add a little bit of Gaussian blur, just a touch to hold that map, sometimes we'll smooth some artifacts here and there, so that's another pro tip for you guys. So. That's it for today's episode, I really hope that you like it and that you learn something new and interesting. Now it's up to you to create really awesome 3D posts on Facebook and upload it there, it's a really cool effect. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please leave them down there in the comment section below, I will be glad to answer it. Have fun guys, experiment, practice and see you in my next fun episode. Bye bye.